and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a very common and interesting topic, and that is measles. So let's get started. So what is measles? Measles, which is also commonly known as rubiola, is a viral infection which is caused by the measles virus. The disease causes a total body skin rash and flu-like symptoms in the affected patients. The measles infection is a common childhood infection and can be serious and even fatal for small children, but it can affect adults too. So while the death rates have been falling worldwide as more children receive the measles vaccine, the disease still kills more than 100,000 patients each year, most of them being under the age of five. So from this definition of measles, we get that it's a common viral infection that is usually found in children, but it can be seen in adults too. The disease, which is also called rubiola, causes a total body skin rash and flu-like symptoms in these patients. So measles is caused by the measles virus, and this is what the typical skin rash looks like in these patients. And of course, we can see their runny nose, their fever, their watery eyes because they have flu-like symptoms. So infections in very young kids may actually be serious and can even be fatal in some cases. But since the emergence of the measles vaccine, we've seen a vast drop in the cases of fatality with this disease. So now that we know what the basics of measles is, let's take a closer look at how one can contract this disease. So measles is a highly contagious viral illness that spreads easily from person to person, especially in those without previous vaccination. So the disease actually spreads through droplet transmission from the nose, throat and mouth of someone infected with the virus. So these droplets actually spray out when the infected person coughs or sneezes. So the disease actually spreads when the infected person with the virus actually sneezes up and coughs. And these droplets actually land on various surfaces or can even be inhaled by someone standing close to this person. And in this way, the virus can actually spread quite easily. So these respiratory particles can also settle on objects and surfaces which means that one can become infected if they come into contact with a contaminated object, such as a door handle, and then they touch their face, nose, or mouth. So if someone sneezes, for example, on this door handle, the virus will actually stay active and alive on this surface, and then another person can come along and touch this infected surface, and then touch their face or their nose or their mouth, and in this way, the virus can be spread to them. So among unimmunized people exposed to the virus, over 90% will contract the disease. That means if the person comes into contact with this infected person and they haven't been vaccinated for the measles virus, they have a 90% chance of actually getting the virus. So getting vaccinated is the best way to prevent measles. So if we take a closer look at this little video that's playing in the bottom right of my screen, it actually says measles is very contagious. For every one person that becomes infected, the disease can spread to 12 to 15 other people. So we see the first infected person and then they infect 10 to 12 others and then they infect 10 to 12 others. And this is how the disease progresses and it can be spread quite easily from one person to the other. So let's talk a little more about vaccination in the measles virus. So as I mentioned in the slide before, there is a vaccine that exists for the measles virus. So there are two doses of the measles vaccine and they are 97% effective at preventing the measles infection. So the one that's most commonly used today is the MMR vaccine and this is a 3-in-1 vaccination that can protect you from measles, mumps and rubella. Or alternatively, there's also another one which is called MMRV which is the measles, mumps, rubella and varicella vaccine. So the two doses are actually given to children between the ages of 12 and 15 months and then again when they're four to six years old and this is typically done worldwide so i want to stress the importance of getting the mmr vaccine or the mmrv vaccine because the beauty of these vaccines is that they are so effective in preventing one from contracting the disease and prevention is always better than cure and because some of these measles infections can become so serious it's always better to prevent the onset of the disease than to try and treat the severity of the symptoms so getting vaccinated comes highly recommended so now let's talk about some signs and symptoms of the measles virus so a high fever is normally the first sign of measles and it usually starts 10 to 12 days after the initial exposure to the virus so when a person comes into contact with an infected person and the virus is spread to their body, it takes about 10 to 12 days after that initial exposure for the new person to actually develop symptoms. So a high fever is usually the first sign and the fever will last approximately four to seven days. 
And during this time, the patient will also go on to develop the following symptoms. So as we said, flu-like symptoms, which include runny nose, which is chorasia, red eyes, which is conjunctivitis, a sore throat and a cough, and tiny white bumps in the mouth, which is actually called complex spots. And this is actually a very important point to make because these spots can be very helpful in the actual diagnosis of measles. And these patients will also develop a rash, which usually starts at the hairline and then spreads to the neck, torso, limbs and feet and the hands. And the rash lasts for approximately five to six days and then fades away. So I want to talk very briefly about the more serious infections, because as we mentioned in the first slide, some patients may suffer very serious infections and it may actually go on to cause a fatality. So most measles related deaths are caused by complications which are associated with the disease. So serious complications are more common in children under the age of five or adults over the age of 30. And the most serious complications include blindness, encephalitis, which means an infection which causes the brain to swell. They can also suffer from severe diarrhea and related dehydration. They may suffer ear infections and severe respiratory infections such as pneumonia. So as we mentioned in the slide previously, our usual symptoms are high fever, nasal discharge, sore throat, conjunctivitis, skin rash, and the tiny white spots inside of the mouth, which are called coplic spots. But in more serious infections, the measles virus can invade cells that lie in the back of the throat or lungs, and here they cause a severe respiratory tract infection. They can also travel to different organ systems and infiltrate different organ systems, and they can cause pancreatitis in the pancreas, which can lead to diabetes mellitus type 1. They can invade the GI tract, which can cause diarrhea in these patients. And the diarrhea becomes so severe that these patients actually suffer dehydration. We have pneumonia, as we mentioned earlier. And this is actually a, a super infection from bacteria because now the immune system or the lungs become so infiltrated by that virus that it's more susceptible to now developing a secondary bacterial infection and these patients can go on to develop a bacterial pneumonia. We can also have an ear infection, which is otitis media, which means a collection of pus in the middle ear. And of course, the encephalitis, which is the swelling of the brain, which can actually leave some children deaf or mentally impaired. And we can have subacute sclerosing panencephalitis as well. So these are all different scenarios which can be encountered in more serious infections. So now let's talk about the diagnosis of measles. So the diagnosis of suspected measles is mostly clinical, meaning that the appearance and the history of the patient suggests the diagnosis. So if the patient comes to you with a typical rash, the coplic spots in their mouth, and the history tells you that they go to a kindergarten where a measles outbreak has taken place, then this can suggest us towards the diagnosis of measles. So in a person with known exposure to someone with measles, or to travel to a foreign country, healthcare providers should always consider measles when faced with a patient who has a high fever and the characteristic rash. Until the rash appears, the presence of coplic spots in the mouth should help suggest the diagnosis. So it is also recommended that the diagnosis can be confirmed using a blood test for the IgMs, which are a type of antibody against the virus. So we can use a blood test to confirm the presence of these IgMs, which are these antibodies which are produced in a current infection with measles virus. So these IgM antibodies against the measles virus will be found in elevated levels in the blood. So if the IgM test is positive, medical professionals should obtain viral cultures. So the throat and the nose is swabbed and then it's sent off to a lab so that the virus can actually be cultured and we can get the results back from the viral culture. And in this way, the diagnosis can be confirmed. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of the measles virus. So there's no specific treatment for measles. Instead, the medications are generally aimed at treating symptomatically by preventing the onset of super infections and maintaining good hydration with adequate fluids and ensuring pain relief in these patients. So the general treatment of the disease includes acetaminophen or ibuprofen to reduce the fever in these patients, rest to help boost their immune systems, plenty of fluids to prevent dehydration, a humidifier to ease the cough and their sore throats, and vitamin A supplements, which act as an immunomodulator that boosts the antibody response to the measles virus and decreases the risk of serious complications. And that brings us to the end of this video on the measles virus. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. 
If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.